Hello, hi, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Juliet. Today I'm going to be making vegetable frittata. So let's get on with it. Frittata is an egg based dish, but I'm going to load this with vegetables. I'm using um, white cabbage and I've got uh, sweet potatoes, onions, garlic and the curly kale which I have already washed. Um, so I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, peel the um, potatoes. I've already washed the skin of these potatoes before uh, peeling it because I'm not going to wash it again. So I don't want the dirt from the outside to the outer part to um, go on the inside. So I've already washed it. Um, the potatoes are now peeled and I'm going to cut up these potatoes because I'm going to steam them. I'm not boiling it in water, but I'm steaming it. So I first of all cut it into um, small chunks. And this is the size that I'm actually cutting it into. And the potatoes are all uh, cut up now. And I'm going to uh, put it in the steaming basket. Like I said, I'm not boiling the potato in water because sweet potato boiling sweet potato in water actually takes away the um the the taste and the texture so i'm um, putting this in the basket and i um, already boiling hot water in the pan and the steaming basket is going straight into the um into the pan with the water so it's not going to touch the water and the potato is going to cook with the steam so I'm going to cover this up and cook it for, um, steam it for about five minutes. Um, sweet potatoes don't take long to cook. I'm going to go ahead and cut up all the other ingredients. So I'm slicing my onions. Um, I like to slice my onions into long strips. I, I would uh, cut these onions into medium uh, strips because I don't want it to go too soft in the uh, frittata so um, the idea is that the whole frittata is going to be it's going to have a crunch to it so I'm crushing the garlic I love garlic in my recipes and um, the cabbage I have peeled out three outer layers of the cabbage to make it clean because I'm not washing it in water. So this cabbage is actually clean and I'm slicing it. I'm removing the core. Uh, that's the hard bit of the uh, cabbage. Um, it's not edible. It's very hard. So I slice the rest of the cabbage. And um, the cabbage looks a lot, but that's what we want. We just want to load this recipe with lots of vegetables. Goodness. Lots of goodness. And um, cutting up the kale as well. Um, I, I washed this kale and left it standing for a while just so that the water would drip off um, before I start uh, slicing it. I like to use kale for this recipe because kale is a hard vegetable and um, it doesn't go limp when you use it in recipes. I really like using kale. So I've cut up all the kale. Um, I'm going to heat up the um, oil in a pan and I'm going to fry all the vegetables in the pan. Um, the potato has cooked, has steamed uh, for five minutes and I'm setting it aside to cool. I've got five... Uh, Actually, one tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. And um, I'm frying the onions and the garlic, frying them for about two minutes before adding the cabbage into it. And in goes the cabbage. 
So this pan is uh, a, an 11 inch pan. So it's quite a, a big um, pan. So it will be able to hold all the vegetables. It may seem a lot now, but it's going to uh, reduce as we, as we cook it. So I'm adding the cabbage, the, uh, the um, kale. The cabbage has cooked for about two, two minutes and I'm adding the kale. So it's going to cook for another two minutes. And at this stage, you have to be very gentle so that it doesn't um, fly all over the place. So we'll cook this down for two minutes. And I'm adding the seasonings, the salt, uh, the vegetable stock powder, and um, adding um, dried tarragon. So tarragon gives it a nice flavor and aroma as well. And I'm crackling some black pepper into it. So I'll cook it for another one minute after adding the, um, the seasonings to it. And keep mixing it. You can see the vegetables, they've kind of reduced now. And um, I've tasted the vegetables and the seasoning you know, there is some point, uh, it's actually banging, you know, I don't need to add any more seasonings to it. So I'm going to leave the vegetable to cool. I'm turning it off. I'm leaving it to cool before we add it to the rest of our ingredients that we're doing. So I'll let it cool down in temperature cause it's quite hot now. So I'm going to go ahead to crack the eggs. There is no frittata without eggs. So I've got 10 eggs here and um, it it's, looks like it's a large amount, but if you're doing a small portion, you can, you can uh, use half of the, um, of the eggs. Just do it in a way that suits you anyway. Um, you can do it in quarters. You can do it in... Um, you can even do more depending on how many people will be eating it. So the vegetables have cooled down and, um, it's not going to cook the egg when we mix it. So, um, you see that you mix the egg to the vegetable or the vegetables to the eggs, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as you mix them together. So mix them in gently. You can see that whole two bowls of vegetable that we started with. We only have one bowl of vegetable now. So all the goodness and the nutrients, they're all locked in now. And um, again, I've got the pan heating up with um, olive oil, but not for long. I've added the sweet potatoes. Make sure you don't mash it up. And as soon as I finish this, I'm going to be um, putting this in the and the pan with the hot oil. Um, I actually reduce the heat so that the oil doesn't heat up too much. Uh, so that's um, one tablespoon of olive oil that I added in the in the pan. Um, it's always good to use non-stick pan. So when you use non-stick pan, you don't use much oil. So all the mixture is gone in now and I've used the back of the spatula to flatten the top to make it smooth and allow the um make sure some of the potatoes are at the top to act as a garnish and to give it that contrast so smoothing it down and um leave it to cook for about um a minute or or two but lower the heat um so that it doesn't start burning so you can see the side uh, the egg is starting to cook on the side. I've already preheated the grill uh, to 150 degrees and um, adding cheese, uh, grated um, cheddar cheese. Uh, this is optional. You know, you don't have to add cheese if you don't like cheese. I like cheese and uh, it gives it a very nice glaze um, when it's under the grill and it seals the top as well. It gives it a good shine. 
and um, I'm going to go ahead and put this under the grill for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes so our frittata has been under the grill for 20 minutes wow 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 look at that isn't that lovely oh this is so so yummy look at that oh my god i can't wait to taste this so you can see how the potatoes uh, um, and the and the uh, vegetables have kind of contrasted it contrasted it contrasted each other the contrast the color yeah and the side as well is lifting up so I can actually turn this into um, a flat plate you know on it just turn the whole thing into a flat plate but ra I would rather uh, cut it up with um, the spatula so use the silicone spatula or non-metal spatula so that you don't scratch your pan so i'm cutting this up like you will cut up a pizza um, you can cut this up into any shape that you like there is no you know fast rule about it you can see the thickness of the frittata is so thick and it's so filling. This is a, a, a whole, a full meal on its own because it's got the vegetables, it's got potatoes, it's got eggs, and it's got all the goodness all locked into it. You can see the thickness, really, really thick. It's moist and it's, it's, it's firm as well. So that's our frittata all done. This is the taste test. Oh, this is really nice. Nice. I'm going to put the, put the measurements and the list of um, ingredients for this recipe for you down below. Um, so don't forget to like, comment, share and hit the subscribe button because there is more coming your way. Bye!